It's the big looming question that arises every single spring. How much do you need to plant so you can actually feed your family for a year or so? So there's a lot of very vague, very unhelpful information around this topic floating around the internet. So in today's video, we're gonna break it down and get super real, super actionable, so you actually have a plan and know exactly what you need to plant in order to feed your family by the time you're done watching this. So for the last week or so, it's been gorgeous. I've been wearing a t-shirt outside and I had plans today to go film this video out in my garden and kind of show you the lay of the land. And then this happened last night. So, so much for that plan. I actually have a few things to work on in the greenhouse, so let's go out there and chat. Actually, it's really cozy in here. So I finally got the soil block maker that I told you about a couple videos ago to try to reduce the plastic that I use in the garden area. And I'm gonna try it out. I made the potting mix. Has to be a certain ratio to stick together. I don't know if I did it right, so I'm not sure if this will work or not. We'll see. I mean, that's not too shabby for my first try. That was literally my first try. I didn't try off camera. Um, I made the potting soil mix stuff wet, way wetter than you should have for regular seed starting containers but it's kind of pretty. They're nice and square and they seem like they're gonna hold together. So did I actually get it on the first try? That never happens. I will share the recipe for the little mix I used eventually, but I wanna make sure it's not a fluke before I publish it on the internet. So stay tuned for that. So I know a lot of you are gardening for the first time or heck, even if you're not gardening for the first time this year, it can feel really confusing to try to sort out how many seeds you should plant, how many rows you should plant, and how much of each type of vegetable you actually need. This stumped me for the longest time, and I always felt like I was really just shooting in the dark and crossing my fingers and hoping I had enough. Until I came up with a very simple equation, don't worry, it's not too mathy, it's pretty simple, that I'm gonna share with you today that makes this so easy you won't believe it. I actually should probably go back inside to show you because I just realized I don't have any paper out here. All right, I'm gonna show you my handy dandy equation, but first I want you to know this. Even if you cannot produce enough vegetables or food from your garden to feed your family for the entire year, grow something anyway. Don't let that stop you or paralyze you. Even if you're just growing enough carrots or potatoes to last you a month or two, that's still getting you further ahead than not growing anything at all. So. Don't get too paralyzed by this question. Do some rough calculations, then get out there and put some seeds in the ground. So here's how this will work. We need our pounds consumed weekly or number of vegetables consumed weekly multiplied by the number of weeks. And that gives us the total pounds needed of that type of vegetable. Now we'll take that number we just got, the pounds needed, and divide it by the average of how many pounds per plant that variety produces, and that will give us the number of plants needed. I'll give you some examples in a minute. Now, before you go crazy with your fancy new equation, keep in mind that it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to grow every single vegetable in enough quantity every single year to feed your family without ever going to the grocery store again. That can be overwhelming. So my best advice is to pick three to five items that you guys eat the most of, that you love the most, that grow fairly easily in your climate and really hone in on those. My four top VIPs that I really work hard on growing in quantity every year are tomatoes, potatoes, onions, and cucumbers. Let's start with tomatoes. So for us personally, we eat the majority of our garden tomatoes in the form of sauce or salsa. We eat some fresh, but not tons and tons. So I need to figure out how many tomatoes I need to grow in my garden each year to make enough sauce to last us. Okay, here's how this breaks down. It takes about five pounds of tomatoes to make one quart of sauce. 
we use about one quart per week, roughly. So if you do the math, that equals around 200 pounds of tomatoes needed. A tomato plant produces around 10 to 15 pounds of tomatoes. And so if I round down to 10 and divide 200 by 10, that gives me a total of 20 tomato plants needed for our goals. But I usually plant more like 50 or 60 because, I don't know, tomato math. Okay, another big one for us are the potatoes. We've talked about potatoes here on this channel quite a bit. So one pound of seed potatoes will give you around 10 pounds of potatoes. They're about a one to 10 ratio. You gotta figure around a half pound of potatoes per person per meal. So for our family of five, we need around three pounds of potatoes per meal. To figure on about two potato meals per week, or that's what we do anyway, you need six pounds of potatoes each week. We can harvest potatoes starting in August and store them all the way through March. So that's around 32 weeks of approximate potato consumption. So you take your 32 weeks, multiply that by six pounds per week, how much we consume. And that gives us roughly 200 pounds of potatoes needed for the season. Now a potato plant produces three to five pounds of potatoes on average. So I'll take the middle of that four and divide our 200 pounds by four, and that gives me a total of 50 potato plants needed, but we'll probably plant more like 60 or 70. Now, when you're figuring your time frame, keep in mind that you won't be able to get all vegetables to last forever, right? So I can grow enough potatoes to last 365 days, but that doesn't mean they're going to last in storage that long. So take that into consideration. So some of the vegetables you're gonna put in your garden are gonna work brilliantly with the equation I showed you, and others, you can figure a little bit differently, they're a little bit easier. Take onions, for example. Onions are a little easier to figure out because you plant an onion set, you get an onion. One to one ratio, pretty simple. So what I like to do is figure out about how many onions do I use a day? Well, for me, it's about one onion a day. If you're not a big onion eater, you might figure onions per week. And then just figure out how many onions you need to get you through from summer until spring, which is just about how long onions will last in cool storage. Another plant I figure a little differently are cucumbers. I have found year after year planting one of these four by 10 beds with cucumbers is more than enough. All the fresh cucumbers and pickles we could ever want. And it gives me plenty to can and also some to force my friends to take. So this is a four by 10 bed. I will just plant the seeds, whatever is recommended on the back of the seed packet. I would say it's probably for me, 20-ish cucumber plants is more than enough. So those are my VIP vegetables, the ones I really, really focus on. But then I still have another layer. These are kind of the second class veggies and these are the ones we still eat a lot of, we still enjoy them, but if I don't grow quite enough to last me till the next garden season, I don't freak out. A good example of this is squash. I plant around five to six winter squash plants per year. It might be spaghetti, it might be acorn, it might be butternut, and I kind of take what I can get. So if I have a bountiful harvest of winter squash, we eat a lot more of it. If I don't, my family doesn't complain and I just use up what I have. So last year I did a number of squ spaghetti squash plants and we still have quite a few left and it's now March. All right, another one of these second class vegetables <laughs> are green beans. We like green beans. My family eats green beans whenever I put them on the table, but I don't love harvesting or preserving them. They're tedious to pick, they're tedious to freeze, they're tedious to can. So I do can some and make dilly beans or pressure canned green beans, but I don't worry about having 5,900 quarts worth of beans every year. So I plant around 20 to 30 plants. That's enough for us to have quite a few green bean side dishes throughout the summer and the fall. I freeze several gallon bags worth, do a couple batches worth of canning on the beans and call it good. So carrots kind of depends on how much you like them. My family likes to eat them fresh out of the garden. They're not as big on them if they're frozen or canned. So I grow one or two beds worth of carrots. It's probably close to 50 or 100 carrots. That gets us through all the fresh eating in the summer. I leave them in the ground and harvest them as needed throughout the fall and even into winter. And then if we run out, meh, it's okay. So I was down here, I was walking by my seeds growing away here and it made me think, 
you know, I have my VIP vegetables, I have my kind of second class vegetables, and then I have the ones that if they work, great. If they don't, eh, I don't sweat it. And broccoli and cauliflower, I have some growing here. They're actually in kind of that third level. I love them, but they don't grow splendidly here. The bugs massacre them. They take up a lot of space. They don't thrive. So I try every year just to see if I can do it. And if it doesn't work, I don't freak out. So we might have enough for a few meals or maybe even a little bit of frozen broccoli or cauliflower, but I don't plan on enough to last me 365 days. Same goes for corn. Corn is a space hog and a nitrogen hog. And if I have room, I'll put it in. It doesn't always give me great results. So it's more of kind of a hobby vegetable versus a serious homestead vegetable. Okay, cabbage. Um, I hope it's not echoey out here. I'm in the shop, I'm sorry. Bear with me. So with cabbage, we'd like to eat some fresh during the summer in coleslaw or roasted cabbage. So I figure around 10 to 15 heads for fresh eating, and then another 10 to 15 heads to make sauerkraut or kimchi. It takes about one medium-sized head of cabbage to fill up one quart jar full of sauerkraut. So around 25 to 30 usually does us. If you're a huge cabbage family, you absolutely could increase that. Also, we don't have a root cellar yet, so I've been keeping my cabbage out here in the shop fridge. This is what a cabbage looks like after six-ish months in storage. Not ideal. So they will last a long time in the fridge, but preserving them with sauerkraut or in a root cellar is probably a better idea. Now don't forget with some of your crops, especially your greens, your spinach, your lettuce, your chard, you don't have to grow the entire quantity you need all at once. These sort of crops do really good with succession planting, which means you plant a little bit and then a little bit more, and you just stretch that out. And if you use something like a cold frame or a hoop house or a greenhouse, or maybe you just live in a milder climate, you can feasibly have these greens, or at least some of them, throughout a majority of the year without having to preserve them or squish the entire season into just a few months. Spinach is something we love, but it's not as good frozen or preserved. So we're just growing a little bit at a time throughout the year and it's working really well. And if this feels like a lot of information and you're wanting something just to help you keep it all straight, I have created a quick little handout that includes all the information in this video, plus some extra tips for knowing exactly how much to plant. And you can grab it via this link or down in the show notes.